Hi everyone! Today we're going to talk about how to use trigonometric substitution with a secant substitution to evaluate an integral. To complete this problem, we'll set up the problem by writing down everything we know, make our substitutions, simplify and evaluate the integral, and then back substitute to get our final answer in terms of x. Let's take a look. In this particular problem, we've been asked to use trigonometric substitution to evaluate the integral of the function 1 divided by the quantity 4x squared minus 1 raised to the 3 halves power. Since we're using trigonometric substitution, the first thing that we want to do is look for something in our function that's in the form either u squared minus a squared, a squared minus u squared, or u squared plus a squared. And in this case, what we mean with u and a, u will be our variable, in this case x, and a will be a constant. So in this case, we're going to identify that we have the form u squared minus a squared because we have the square of a term that involves our variable x and then the square of a constant function. We have the difference of those two things. If we had 1 minus 4x squared, we'd be using a different substitution. And if we had 4x squared plus 1 or 1 plus 4x squared, that would be yet a, a different substitution. But in this case, we have the variable term minus the constant term, and both of those are squares, which means that we've identified the form here, u squared minus a squared. And given that we have that form in our function, we're going to want to use the substitution u equals a times secant of theta and this trigonometric identity, secant squared of theta minus 1 is equal to tangent squared of theta. So our next step is to set up our trigonometric substitution problem. So given that we have the form u squared minus a squared, we want to identify u and a. And the way that we'll do that is we'll take the square root of our first term here, so 4x squared. The square root of 4x squared will give us 2x, so we know that 2x is equal to u, and the square root of 1 will give us 1, so we know that a is equal to 1. Once we have u and a, we can plug them into our identity here, u equals a secant of theta. So what we get, of course, is 2x equals 1 times secant theta, or just secant theta. Once we have this in place, we need to do a couple more things before we're done with our setup. You'll want to go through the same steps every time. You won't necessarily use everything that you solve for in this setup process, but it's handy to have around so that as you're going through the trigonometric substitution, you have these little pieces that you can just come back to if you need to plug in for them. So what you'll want to do once you get this u equals a secant theta in place is solve for x if, if you haven't already. So to get x, we'll divide both sides by 2, so we'll get x equals 1 half secant theta. You'll also want to make sure that you've solved for secant theta. In this case, since a was equal to 1, we already have. And you want to make sure that you've solved for theta. So to get theta, we'll take arc secant, or the inverse secant function, of both sides. And what we'll get is theta equals arc secant of 2x. So when we take arc secant of both sides, we'll get the secant to cancel here, leaving, leaving only theta on the right-hand side, and we'll get arc secant of 2x on the left-hand side. So we solve for theta. We're also going to need dx, or the derivative of x. So the derivative of 1 half secant theta will be 1 half times secant theta tangent theta, because the derivative of secant of theta is secant of theta times tangent of theta, and 1 half is a constant coefficient that will remain out in front here when we take the derivative. We need to make sure also, because we took the derivative, that we add this d theta notation. The last thing we're going to need is our right triangle for the secant substitution. So when we have a secant substitution, our right triangle will look like this. If this is the angle theta, then our hypotenuse will be equal to u, and we already know that u is equal to 2x, so our hypotenuse will be 2x, and let's just go ahead and write that this will be whatever your u is. Your adjacent side here on the bottom will be a, and a we already know is equal to 1, so this side is length 1. And then our opposite side will be the square root 
of what we identified in our original function, u squared minus a squared, which of course we already know to be 4x squared minus 1, what we had there in our function. So that's our third side, our opposite side, and this is u squared minus a squared. So whatever your u and a end up being, you'll need to plug in to make these three sides of the triangle for the secant substitution. Okay, so that completes our setup process. Now we need to go ahead and make substitutions into our integral. So we'll say that we have the integral of 1 divided by, we're going to be plugging in 4x. So we'll have 4 times x squared. We know that x is equal to 1 half secant theta. So we'll get 1 half secant of theta, and that's squared, of course, because it's squared up here in our function, minus 1, and all that is raised to the 3 halves power. We'll also make a substitution for dx. So dx we found is 1 half secant theta tangent theta d theta, and I'll go ahead and pull the d theta out here at the end. Now that we've made our substitutions, it's just a matter of simplifying this integral as much as we can until we get it to a point where we can actually evaluate the integral. So the first thing we'll do is simplify this fraction multiplied by the 1 half secant theta tangent theta. We'll bring this into the denominator. We'll pull the 1 half out in front. So we'll get 1 half. This 1 half here is going to come out in front of the integral because it'll be a constant coefficient since everything inside is multiplied together. So we'll have secant theta tangent theta in our numerator. And then in our denominator here, we'll have 4. And then when we square 1 half secant theta, we'll get 1 fourth secant squared theta minus 1, all raised to the 3 halves power, times d theta. As you can see here, we're going to get the 4 and the 1 fourth to cancel with each other. And we're just left with secant squared theta minus 1 inside our parentheses. This is the point at which we want to refer back to the identity that we found in the beginning or that we wrote down as part of our formula here. So what we see is that we have secant squared of theta minus 1 inside our identity, and we've seen that it's equal to tangent squared of theta. We have secant squared theta minus 1 here in our denominator, so we can make a substitution for tangent squared of theta. And what that leaves us with is 1 half times the integral of secant theta tangent theta all divided by will end up with tangent squared theta raised to the 3 halves power times d theta. Since we have tangent squared and then raised to the 3 halves power in our denominator, we can multiply 2 times 3 halves and we'll get the 2 in the numerator here and denominator to cancel. Those exponents get multiplied together, they cancel. And what we're left with is just tangent cubed in our denominator. So we have secant theta tangent theta divided by tangent cubed. Well, we'll get a tangent here to cancel from the numerator and we'll be left with tangent squared in our denominator. So what we can write here now is secant theta divided by tangent squared of theta d theta. Now, despite having my trigonometric identities memorized, it's always easier for me to simplify trigonometric functions like this when I get things in terms of sine and cosine. So since we have tangent squared theta in the denominator here, we can change that. Remember that tangent is equal to sine over cosine. So I have secant theta here all divided by since it's tangent squared, I need sine squared theta divided by cosine squared theta d theta. So now, since I have secant of theta divided by a fraction, instead of dividing by that fraction, I can multiply by its inverse. So what I'll get is secant of theta, instead of dividing by this fraction, multiply by cosine squared theta all divided by sine squared theta d theta. And we know that secant of theta is 1 over cosine of theta. So let's actually just go ahead and change this to 1 divided by cosine of theta. And what we see now 
is that we get cosine here to cancel and this squared here cancels we're just left with cosine of theta in the numerator so we have one half times cosine of theta divided by sine squared theta d theta now if i break this apart i can break apart my fraction and i can get cosine theta remember in the denominator here i basically have sine theta times sine theta so i have two terms so i can bring one of them underneath the cosine and basically say that this is multiplied by one divided by sine theta d theta i haven't changed anything notice in my numerator i still have cosine of theta and in my denominator i still have sine squared theta but what this tells me now is that i get one half I know that sine over cosine is tangent, which means that the inverse, cosine divided by sine, is cotangent. So I get cotangent theta. And 1 over sine theta, I know to be cosecant of theta, d theta. And now I'm in a great spot because I know that the integral of cotangent theta times cosecant of theta is negative cosecant of theta. So what I get is negative 1 half cosecant of theta the integral of this right here is negative cosecant of theta so I just brought the negative sign out in front and I have this and then I have to add C to account for my constant of integration so what I did there was manipulate what I had inside my integral to simplify it to a point where I could take the integral I had something that I knew the integral of and I could take the integral and, and get something here in terms of theta now I have to change my answer here to be back in terms of x instead of in terms of theta because we started with x and that's going to require some back substitution with the setup work that we did so let's take a look at that the easiest way to go about doing this is to change cosecant of theta back into 1 over sine of theta because it's a lot easier for us to look at our right triangle and deal with sine than it is to deal with cosecant so we'll end up with negative 1 half times 1 over sine of theta plus C and we know that sine is opposite over hypotenuse so we'll get 1 divided by opposite over hypotenuse opposite we know is the square root of 4x squared minus 1 so I'll get the square root of 4x squared minus 1 divided by the hypotenuse which I know is 2x so I've got 2x here plus C. And I'm at a point now where I'm just simplifying my answer because I'm, I'm all back in terms of x. I just need to simplify this as much as possible. So again, when I have a fraction here and I'm dividing by a fraction, instead of dividing by that fraction, I can multiply by the inverse. So we'll multiply 1 by the inverse of this and we'll get 2x over the square root of 4x squared minus 1 plus c so i'll of course get my twos to cancel here and i'll just be left with negative x divided by the square root of 4x squared minus 1 plus c which is my final answer for the integral of this original function here back in terms of x so i hope you found that video helpful if you did like this video down below and subscribe to be notified of future videos.